Well, thank you. I'm, uh, it's uh, great to be here. Uh, the program says Mark Humayan. Uh, like Richard and Joel, Mark and I collaborate for uh, decades now. And so I'm uh, very happy to be here to, to describe our project, the Artificial Retina. Uh, as you'll be seeing in this session, as you've already seen, as you'll continue to see, uh, there's a field, what we call bioelectronics, where we try and take electronic systems and meld them with uh, uh, biological systems. And this is uh, fairly difficult to do, so it requires a lot of disciplines, some of which are listed here. Uh, fortunately, there's been some work already in this field. Again, you saw the spinal cord stimulator in the last talk. So we're in, and these have common components, which are generally directed at protect, uh, protecting the safety of the patient. Uh, we, for the long term, we don't want wires going across the skin, so we want to translate information wirelessly across the skin to the implant. Uh, we need to protect the electronics because the salty environment inside the body will, in fact, destroy the electronics. So we need to do something called hermetic packaging to protect the electronics once it's implanted. Uh, but by combining those components into an implant, uh, we've been able to create an artificial retina that uh, partially restores sight to the blind. Uh, here's the external part of the system. On the left, you see a glasses that has a camera on the bridge of the nose. Uh, that camera feeds a video to a belt-worn uh, computer called a video processing unit, which then processes the video and sends digitized data back to the glasses. On the side of the glasses, on the left side of the glasses shown, you'll see a, uh, a small antenna which uh, transmits information to the patient. So you see this whole external system worn on the mannequin on the right. And this is the implant. So the external system captures the image data and communicates it to an implant. On the upper circle, what you see is the, a, a, a picture of the implant, or a graphic of the implant, I should say. Most of the implant actually sits outside the eye. It's under the skin of the eye, but it's on the outside of the eye, because with today's technology, it's too large to be put inside the eye. The small portion in the center of that ring on the top is, that, is the electrode array, the flexible electrode array, which goes into the eye and interfaces with the retina. On the bottom circle, what you see is a picture taken through a dilated pupil of the electrode array on the surface of the retina. Each one of those black dots is an electrode, or in the case of a retinal prosthesis, we call it a pixel. And the Argus 2 device is a 6 by 10 array of pixels, so 60 electrodes. Compare that to 100 million photoreceptors in the eye in natural vision, and you can see that we're still at the stage where we're creating artificial vision. Uh, this is a, uh, a worldwide trial. The, co the company that makes the device is Second Sight Medical Products, located about 20 miles west of here in Silmar. Uh, but the trial is worldwide, and this is incredibly important because we get multiple investigators giving us feedback on the device. We confirm results, which, makes, uh, which guarantees the integrity of the data. Uh, so, and I want to also say that I'm presenting this on behalf of literally hundreds of people who have worked on this in the last 10 years. So it's a really a pleasure and quite an honor to be there, to be here on their behalf. Now, this is an example of what the patients can do with the device. This is in a clinical setting. Uh, what you're going to see when the video runs is the patient is, is looking at a screen, and the letter O is on the screen, and then there's going to be progressively smaller letters and she's going to tell us what she sees. And she's using the camera to see what's on the screen. On the lower right, you see a laptop, and there's two video windows on the laptop. On the left video window is the view of the camera. And what you'll notice is that as, when the letters are large, the patient cannot see the entire letter all at all one time, so she has to move her head. On the right-hand video uh, window on the laptop, it, the one that's green with black dots, you'll see some of those black dots change to white and they'll go black to white back and forth. And that's the stimulation pattern that's being applied to her retina by the intraocular electrode array. So let's go ahead and play the video and she'll tell you what she sees. Is this called smaller? Yes. Ah, yeah. uh, so, I don't know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. See? Yes. Hello? Yes. So what I find interesting about this video is the fact that, again, as the letters get smaller, the, the camera can see them all at the same time, and in some ways it becomes easier. So there's been 32 pla patients implanted with the Argus II in the clinical trial. Uh, all the patients can see some letters. 
Some of the patients can see all letters. So there's a, gr a gradation, some better performers than others. And our challenge as scientists then is to figure out why some are doing better than others and try and improve on that. Uh, this is an example of, of, uh, of uh, at-home activities. This lady was interviewed by the BBC. She actually lives in Southern California, but the BBC came over to interview her. No one expects grandma to play like a professional, but for Linda Morford, that any ball goes in is amazing. She's totally blind. The small circle in her glasses is a camera, and some clever electronics turns the images into patterns of dark and light. It may not sound like much, but for Linda, it's made a huge difference. So I want to emphasize the last thing that the announcer said. She said it may not sound like much, but for Linda, it's made a huge difference. So a little bit of vision really does help these people quite a bit, and I'll talk more about that later. Uh, so the most exciting part of the talk for most people here is the regulatory update, I'm sure. <laughs> so here we go. Everybody hang on. Uh, the device has received CEMARC approval in February 2011, and that means it can be sold in Europe. And it is being sold. Uh, it's not being sold off the shelf. Yeah, there are a few centers which can implant this, and, uh, but it is being sold. Uh, in September 2012, we were fortunate that an, ex uh, an FDA panel of external advisors recommended to the FDA unanimously that the benefits of the Argus II outweigh the risks uh, for the conditions shown there. And uh, we're aw still awaiting the final word from the FDA. Okay, so everyone take a deep breath now that that excitement is over, and we'll move on with the rest of, what, uh, of the presentation. Uh, we want to improve the device, of course. One of the technologies we're looking at is taking the camera off the visor and pointing it inside the eye. If you think about how you see, you don't see by moving your head around. Well, that's part of it, but that's not all you do. You also move your eyes, and your eyes and your head and the ocular motor system uh, keeps track of where your eyes are pointed, and you form a per the per perception of your environment around you. So we'd like to, this is uh, work, uh, uh, working with some colleagues at USC Armentangue, we're working on the technology to put the camera inside the eye. Uh, we're also exploring color vision in the subjects. This is something we didn't anticipate, but again, this isn't in all subjects, but in some of the subjects, they're able to see uh, the, a range of colors, which is interesting. By manipulating the electrical pulses that we apply to the retina, we found that we can reliably recreate colors within a subject. Uh, interestingly, we can also create two different colors at the same time. So uh, by putting uh, stimulus, uh, the gray stimulus on electrode A, and the yellow stimulus on electrode B, they can tell us, yeah, I see gray and yellow, and, and it's on at the same time. So we're beginning to get the tools to construct not just black and white images and grayscale, but actually color images, and that carries a lot of information. So that's going to be an interesting area for us to explore in the future as well. So some of the conclusions we can draw from this then is uh, uh, combined, we have over 100 years of implant uh, life uh, uh, in patients, and it has an acceptable safety profile. Uh, as judged by the, uh, the, bo the governing bodies in both Europe and the external advisory panel from the U.S. The safety uh, profile is adequate, and it, there is some benefit derived. Uh, the subjects can detect light, improve their performance on visual tasks, including orientation and mobility, and these results are sustained, so it's not a transient effect. And they use this in their daily lives, and it, it, it overall it has a positive impact on their well-being, uh, and we see our challenge now is to continue uh, to make improvements, uh, both by modifying the software on the external system and, uh, and, and then developing new hardware. Uh, so a couple thoughts I want to leave you with then is, uh, I, I said I was going to refer back to this, is that the first thought is that a little bit of vision goes a long way. Uh, our patients show us that by, uh, we're with 60 pixels, a very small number of pixels, again, compared to the 100 million photoreceptors you have in each eye with natural vision. They can use this to do things we wouldn't anticipate. And they do so by, by using that little bit of light that we're giving them, that little improvement in vision, and then integrating that with their other senses and their knowledge of what they're doing, what they want to do, where they are, uh, in order to accomplish this task in ways that we honestly didn't anticipate. So a little bit of vision goes a long way. I mean, compare it to this scenario. Imagine if all the lights went out in this auditorium except for the exit signs at the back. Without the exit signs, you would have a heck of a time getting out of here. But with that little bit of light, that exit sign back there, you can use that as a beacon to work your way back to the auditorium and safely exit. Let's hope that doesn't happen. 
Another thought I want to leave you with is that we're really not satisfied with making just a little bit of an improvement in vision. We want to restore near-perfect vision to these people. The, the patients deserve it. The scientific challenge is immense and something we should try and tackle. I, I talked about the intraocular camera as one of the technologies we're working on. Another thing I think we have to do is we have to if we have the electronics and the biology here, we have to move them closer together. And it's not just making the electronics more like the biology. We have to actually look at can we modify the retina? Can we modify neurons to make them a better substrate for electrical stimulation? I really think if we do that, then we will uh, work, uh, we'll, have a we'll go a long way towards our goal of restoring high functional vision in the blind. Thank you.